Finally, NASA and many other space agencies and companies are working hard to land a spacecraft on the moon with an upcoming innovative mission called M1. M1 stands for Intuitive Machines One, the name of the company that designed and built the lander that will carry six NASA payloads to the moon. This mission is the first private lunar landing and it is scheduled to launch on February 14th, 2024, using a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. The lander, named Odysseus, will touch down on the lunar surface on February 22nd, 2024, at Crater Malapert A, near the South Pole of the Moon. Why is this mission so important? And what can we learn from it? Well, in this video, we will answer these questions and more. We will explore the mission overview, the scientific and technological goals, and the future implications of this historic endeavor. So, stay tuned and get ready to witness a new chapter in lunar exploration. The IM-1 mission is the first of its kind. It is the first time that a private company will land a spacecraft on the moon, and it is the first time that NASA will use a commercial service to deliver its payloads to the lunar surface. This is part of NASA's Commercial Lunar Payload Services Initiative, which allows NASA to partner with private companies to deliver payloads to the moon at a lower cost and faster pace. The lander, Odysseus, is named after the legendary Greek hero who endured many hardships and adventures on his way back home from the Trojan War. It is about the size of a small car, and it weighs about 1,800 kilograms. It has four legs, two solar panels, a high-gain antenna, and a payload bay. The lander will launch on a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket from Kennedy Space Center in Florida, no earlier than February 14, 2024. The launch window is about two hours long, and the rocket will place the lander in a low Earth orbit. From there, the lander will use its own propulsion system to perform several maneuvers to reach the moon. It will enter a lunar orbit about four days after launch, and then it will descend to the surface using a combination of thrusters and a guidance system. The landing site is Crater Malapert A, located near the south pole of the moon. This site was chosen because it offers a good balance of sunlight, temperature, and communication with Earth. It will operate for about 14 days on the surface, powered by solar panels and batteries. It will communicate with Earth using a high-gain antenna and a relay orbiter. During this time, the lander will deploy and activate the six NASA payloads that it carries, and it will also perform some autonomous tasks, such as taking pictures and videos and collecting and analyzing surface samples. It will also test some new technologies, such as a navigation node and a GNSS receiver that could enable future landers and rovers to navigate more accurately and autonomously on the moon. The IM-1 mission is not only a demonstration of the capabilities and benefits of the Commercial Lunar Payload Services Initiative, but also a valuable opportunity to advance the scientific and technological knowledge of the Moon, especially its polar regions, which are of high interest for future exploration and utilization. The six NASA payloads we will discuss now that the lander will carry are based on the document that NASA released recently this year. However, this document may not reflect the most updated payload manifest and mission details, as some changes may have occurred since then. The six NASA payloads that the document mentions are, the first payload is LN-1, or Lunar Node 1 Navigation Demonstrator, a communication and navigation node that will enable autonomous navigation for future landers and rovers. It will use a software-defined radio to transmit and receive signals from Earth and other spacecraft, and it will also use a laser retroreflector to measure the distance and position of the lander. The second one is scalp CES, or stereo cameras for lunar plume surface studies. A pair of cameras that will capture high-resolution images and videos of the lander's plume effects on the surface, such as dust, erosion, and cratering. It will also monitor the thermal and optical properties of the surface before and after landing. The third payload that the lander will have on board is roll seas or radio wave observations at the lunar surface of the photoelectron sheet, a suite of instruments that will measure the space weather and lunar surface interactions, such as plasma, electric fields, 
and magnetic fields. It will also study the effects of solar storms and cosmic rays on the lunar environment and the lander's electronics. The fourth one is NDL, or Navigation Doppler LiDAR for precise velocity and range sensing, a LiDAR system that will use laser pulses to measure the lander's velocity and range during the descent and landing phases. It will also provide high-precision navigation and hazard avoidance information for the lander. The fifth payload is LRA, or Laser Retro Reflector Array, a passive device that will reflect laser beams from Earth or orbiting spacecraft, allowing precise measurements of the lander's location and the lunar orbit and rotation. And finally, the RFMG, or Radio Frequency Mass Gauge, a device that will use radio waves to measure the mass of the lander and its remaining propellant, providing vital information for the lander's operation and performance. These payloads will provide valuable data and insights that will help us understand the moon better and also prepare us for future human and robotic missions there. The IM-1 mission is not only a historic achievement for intuitive machines and NASA, but also a milestone for the future of lunar exploration and human spaceflight. The mission will demonstrate the capabilities and benefits of the Commercial Lunar Payload Services Initiative, which will enable NASA to send more payloads to the moon in a faster and cheaper way, and also to leverage the expertise and innovation of the private sector. The mission will also pave the way for more commercial and international participation in lunar exploration, creating new opportunities and partnerships for scientific and economic development. This will also relate to the Artemis campaign, which aims to land the first woman and the first person of color on the moon by 2028 and establish a sustainable human presence there by the end of the decade. The mission will support the Artemis goals by providing valuable information and experience on the lunar environment, especially the polar regions, which are potential sites for future human landing and habitation. It will also test and validate some of the technologies and systems that will be needed for the Artemis missions, such as navigation, communication, and sample collection. This is a remarkable example of how NASA and the private sector can work together to achieve ambitious and inspiring goals in space exploration. The mission will not only advance our knowledge and understanding of the moon, but also inspire and engage the public and the next generation of explorers and innovators. We hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new and interesting. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. And don't forget to leave a comment below and let us know what you think about the IM-1 mission and lunar exploration in general. Thank you for watching and see you next time.